220, pulling 720, squatting 661. So, no, 611, 611, bench 440, bench 440, 220, natural. All right. natural. All natural. Yeah. All natural. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Straight up. That easy cream. My bad, where you at, man? <laughs> nah, nah, I know you in your own lane, bro. I ain't. Uh-uh. <laughs> man, that's just impressive, man. Yeah, man. It's, 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 man. Was it a long test of me? It was tested. Tested, okay. Yeah, it was tested. Even, yeah. even playing ground. Uh-huh, yeah, man. It was a dog fight, man. I love, I love being in the tested thing because it's like a constant fight. Yeah. Who, who was uh, behind you? Who was behind me? How he just... Oh, shoot. What's his name? Man, Rich. Yeah, Rich, he was behind me. He did pretty good. We went uh, back and forth a little bit. And everything else, but you know, you know how that playing out. Yeah. yeah. The best man wins. Best man like wins. It's a dog fight. Yeah, Speaking man. of dog fights, next week, Iron Wars 5. Oh, you We going to be there. The whole South Side going to be over there. Right, we take this shit back here. <laughs> yeah, man. We, we, we bring it. Y'all the straps, we got um, my boy Plot. Plot going to be benching. Got T. Curry out there. So, squatting. Squat deadlifting. Squatting, deadlifting. Uh, who else we got going out? Man. We got Plot. You say we got Rockabye. Rockabye. Rockabye, Rockabye coming. coming. Mm. He gonna yep. tell you how to get big, just eating everything at the buffet. <laughs> yeah, all the shit. Oh, uh, yeah. Who else, man? Shout out Jimmy House, man. Yeah, Jimmy, Jimmy House, House gonna be over there. Man, who else coming? Percy is Percy. Percy is gonna be over there, man. Man, it's about to get packed out. We gonna be one of the biggest iron ones they got. I know. It's more official now. It's too. official. Like they got the weigh-ins and weight classes. Oh, of course, Pitt, man. Shout out to Pitt, man. Uh, he gonna be over there. Shout out to Pitt. You know what I mean? He said, "Who ready to come in second? I am. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what you think, like, double up bar, safety bar, like, what was the best way to get your squat up? The best way to get the squat up, because it's going to be a process of getting the squat up, but I'll say the go-to to build the squat is the duffalo bar. Because with the duffalo bar, it's still going to feel a little bit like the straight bar, but it's forcing you to hit the depth. Yeah. Compare it, but for recovery methods, uh, the safety bar. Yeah, because I know that safety bar, man, yeah. it's like, you know, I do a low bar squat, so I got the bar lower on my back. Yeah. When I get right there, man, I be like <laughs> shaking because yeah. it's, it's kind of like a high bar position, right? Yeah, and it treats, and with that having that high bar position, it focuses, it focuses on when you're getting on out that groove yeah, it was and bracing a lot tighter. That's really yeah. what it is. For example, because I remember one time I put 600 on the... Uh, I think I saw that video. Oh, yeah. yeah. I think I saw that video. And man, that shit just threw me forward, <laughs> but at the long run, it taught me how to stay tight. Yeah. If something forces you forward. 
and drive on up. Yeah. So I'll say overall, if you overload on the uh, safety, on the safety ball, it'll give you a good carry over on the straight ball. And the duffel load, he said, he explained it, he said that you can get deeper in the hole and work that yep. leg drive in the hole. Yeah, deeper in the hole in there because, you know, I feel off uh, when I was training with the duffel load ball, when I'm driving in and I'm cranked in there compared to the straight ball, yeah. I'm going out that hole yeah. a lot, you know, a lot, a lot better, quick. a lot quicker and better with us and with the straight ball. And going to the straight ball correlates because you're setting your elbows with the duffel load ball. Yeah. yeah. So when you go to the straight ball, shit, you already tight in and your back fresh, everything fresh, you look you ready to go. Would you say out of all of these, the duffel load would be the one to overload to get stronger? And do like a, a cycle of, uh, Duffalo bars and then go back to straight bar? Mm, I would say I would go, if you're doing the whole time to get stronger, yeah. I would say safety bar, Duffalo bar, straight bar. Yep. Squat bar. Alright, squat bar. Squat bar, Duffalo bar. Bounce on out, and this is what I like about the add up. Because with you training with the add and add up to the good girl, bad girl, you're building that strength out the bottom. So when you dropping, or whatnot, you ain't gonna crash. Yeah, yeah, you know man. Because I seen you remember, buddy, that um, JJ had to meet uh, the Russian guy, Romanian guy. He had, I think he had like six seventy something on the bar, and like it was literally like this. And like when he come out, he be like, like all broken. You know what I mean? He still got it. Yeah. He still got it. But it's, I think he dropped way too fast, man. Mm -hmm. But hey, he came back up, so yeah, can't say nothing about it. Yeah, it's, it's all about that rebound. But it's just, it's just practice with it, though. It's timing too, right? Yeah, practice and timing. Timing. So, so as soon as you feel that bounce, you gotta crank them elbows up. Yeah, you gotta crank it quick, as quick as you can. And with accessories, accessories, that's the number one key right there. Accessories. What, what would you say the best accessories work for? Them? Best accessories. If somebody wanna get a squat and deadlift. Huh? Squat and deadlift. Well, if to, to me personally, on my personal preference, if you're doing uh, anything that's, you know, with deadlifts, I say any type of upper back work, yeah. is glute work. That's how they say big back equals a yep. big pull. Mm -hmm. Big back, I, big I like T-ball rows. Yes. T-ball rows. Table rows, like cool downs, mm -hmm. everything. Anything with a pause or something, or even uh, the seal rows, where you laying on your stomach. You got on the, the bench? Yeah. yeah. You got the bench on it. I never seen them, but I seen a few of the CrossFit guys do that. Man, now that, that's a money maker, because like when I'm going, I will hold it for like three seconds yeah. and all this to get activated. Because the way I pull, I normally be a little bit slouched on. So I try to, you know, overwork what my What you mean back. slouch? You gonna be... Like, I don't... Because I notice when you pull, like, a lot of people will be like, oh, yeah, his back is rounded. Yeah. But that's just the natural yeah. way it is. Natural you know way, yeah. Mean? You ain't gonna be perfect like this. It it's gonna round the heavy, especially you pulling the 700 plus mm -hmm. conventional. Your back gonna round a little bit. Exactly. As long as the, the straight, I mean, the lower back is straight, man. That's what people don't understand. Yeah. You can cave in a little bit. Uh-huh, and folks be getting some misconstrued and saying, oh, you gotta be like this, yeah. but ain't none of that shit gonna hurt No, I mean, like, for example, this is what I learned the other day, too, so. You know how people be like telling you to squat? Uh-huh. Like when, when, in, when have you gotten up out of a, uh, uh, a seat like this? Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Yo, when? Like, oh yeah, let me get up. That's hard. That takes a lot more muscles than anything. Mm -hmm. When you get up, right here. Yo. That's that natural position right here. Mm -hmm. This way you need to be. But everybody's body's different. Yeah, you know everybody's body. You got a big back, like, like you said, like us, because I, I kind of do the same as you. Uh -huh. We got big back, so like you said, work on that. That way you know your back's going around a little bit. I'm going to make sure my back is strong enough to handle that as a human. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I thought I was the only one. <laughs> big back, big everything. Cause, uh, and also hamstrings. Because uh, me, uh, me and Johnny, we were even talking, we talking about hamstrings. Like, hamstrings, and it's crazy, the most messed up, you know, place where people get injured in. Yeah. The hamstrings. Because some of the folks work focus on quads, yeah. they neglect the hamstrings. And what happens is, if a joker use quads all the time, yeah. from squat, you know, deadlift, anything, uh, they uh, hamstring gets so weak because yeah. their quads are getting so tight, it'll strain and tear their quads, yeah. and they out for the game. Yeah, man. So that's all. Hamstring. Yeah, the hamstring gone. And I remember when I was up in uh, college, I, had, I learned the hard way, I used to be quads, 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 and neglect my hamstrings. And when I was squatting, my quads were so activated that my hamstring then just snapped. Yeah, it, was, it was overworked, really. Yeah, it was overworked. So, so ever since then, I said, I'm just, you know, focused on my hamstring development. So, hamstring work, it's only so much you can do. What would you say is like, that's, I got a, I got an issue with, it's like, when 
when I think hamstrings, I do the hamstring curls, uh -huh. maybe some stiff leg dads, but it's kind of hard to get other workouts to hit that. Like, yeah. what, what would you say is good for the hams? But you got to really think about it. Like, what's what's your go-to for the uh, hams? My go-to for the hams, I would say you got your band of good mornings, you got your stiff leg pauses, you got your leg curls, you got your seated leg curls, you know what I'm saying? You got your banded leg curls, you know? And with all that, you can focus on that with pauses and eccentric wise to get the strength. Because some folks, when they, especially when they doing leg curls, they go fast. They just go fast. Oh, and they don't put no pressure on the way down. And, yeah, yeah, on the way down. I can show you real fast. Y'all got a, uh, yeah, we got a hand. Oh, right there. So the thing with leg curls, and what I learned, to the man, girl. Yeah. People, they'll try to, you know what I'm saying? They'll treat the shit as like, let me get that shit done fast. Yeah, fast, fast, fast. And you don't need that many reps with leg curves to make it effective. So, when you leg curling, right? What people mess up on, they just do this shit like this. Yeah. But it's all about driving your hip in and isolate. You see, what I'm, you see the difference yeah. between doing this and doing and driving the hip in. Squeezing the glutes. Yeah, you're squeezing the glutes. So when you're squeezing, then you go. Because you got that hip driven into the uh, pad. And with that, you can focus with time under tension. You can go single leg with it either way because you're getting the activation that you need to have. Because what happens is people, they'll, they'll say, hey, I'm going to put 100, 130 pounds, but you don't need all that shit. You can just put Freaking 70 pounds, 80. time on attention to 80. I'm a 70, right. 80 pounder. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, man, I don't want to be too heavy, man. Yeah. I didn't understand. <laughs> or stuff like this. Oh, this is swinging like crazy. Yeah, you know? but there's so many different ways of the donkey kick style. Like, if you get a pad or use hamstrings, right? Or you get like a, you get a whole, you get a plate or two. Still activating, driving your hands straight through there, and you push it through there. Hold on. Okay, so you're going like uh, the reverse. Yeah, like a reverse. Yeah. And it's and it's really that's all it is, just reversing and modifying your ways to get into it. Because what happens is a lot of people they'll think it's one way to do hammers, but it's so many ways to hit hammers to get it, and people neglect so much of the backside of a. Big pool, a big squat, or a big bench in the backside where everything is. Yeah. Right yeah. And even if you want to have fun with it, yeah, yeah. Come in. Just push it in there, no matter what type of weight it is. But it's all style. In the style you can, cause it's about like 10, 20 different ways to hit the hands and strings up. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah. If you, if you put a, a little bit more uh, height into it, you can also still drive in and work with the hip to the bottom. Cause the tree, the tree has a front squat, still work with the quads. We going in. You got a little bit more room to mess with. Then focus on it. And that's real good if you doing like, you know, a little bit more mobility work or something like that for your carryover for uh for sumos and even we were talking about like a stiff leg if you still come from the bottom or whatnot drive it up right there so right now we're working on the uh, sumo right is that um, what it is with this, we're working on uh, just the RDL style. Okay. Just like that, and just work, just showing doing the front squat uh, goblet with the uh, belt squat. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. But, uh, and with the uh, sumo, it's a little bit, a little bit different. And even like this, like you've been doing, coming in from first, because if you're driving down, I'm tapping that dumbbell for me real quick. Cause I ain't much of a sumo lift at all. 
but the way you can still feel it, if you had a dumbbell, right? Even if you had two dumbbells on one, you can focus a little bit more on it. So it's pretty much just driving through the hip and you can hold it for like 30 seconds. It's holding it for 30 seconds and you'll feel that isometric move and you can go a little bit past the isometric move and you can focus on that lockout. But anybody with like weak lockouts and you know stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This is all it is. I'd be at the, at the gym back at the house and I'd just be, you know, experimenting with shit and whatever works. Yeah. I use it, I implement it on my clients, so you know, something like that and all that good stuff.